In 1915, the Netherlands began designing a new class of three cruisers to protect its colonies in the East Indies, now Indonesia, ostensibly from Japan, and to suppress any native insurrection. These were the 6,776-ton Java class. When construction started in mid-1916, they were pretty impressive for their type and time, being as large and as heavily armed, if not more so, than most of their contemporaries. The idea was they and the destroyers they lead would deal with enemy escorts while submarines went after the capital ships and transports. The Navy wanted better, of course, but the days of the mighty Dutch Empire were over. Financially, that just wasn't going to happen. Like many smaller empires trying to hold on to past glories, they had to seek outside material help just to get these done. The material and financial devastation of World War I and the third one was canceled even before being started and the first two weren't completed until the mid-twenties, by which time they were hopelessly obsolete. Though not initially planned for it, the protracted construction did mean that accommodation were added to carry two spotter float planes for scouting. No hangar or catapult could be added though on such a small ship. The planes would have to be lowered into the water by crane then recovered afterwards. One thing to consider was the geopolitical situation. It was pretty unique for the Netherlands. The Netherlands was invaded on May 10, 1940 and surrendered five days later. In most cases, that would mean whatever ships were still active would head to Britain and join the British Navy. In the case of the Netherlands, though, not so. Their Navy's main operating area wasn't their home waters, like in most small navies, but instead was mostly based in the East Indies, the other side of the planet. So they were kind of in this situation where their homeland had fallen, but the bulk of their Navy was on the far side of the globe, protecting the country's economic center against a potential enemy, Japan, that hadn't attacked them yet, instead of trying to hit back at the declared enemy, Germany, that was on the other side of the planet occupying their capital. So they worked with the Royal Navy a lot, but mostly in the East Indies. Then Japan got in and they got decimated and overrun in early 1942. So what few ships were left had to essentially join the Royal Navy. Since this is bound to come up, let's just go ahead and address it. I'm talking about illegal salvaging, more commonly called grave robbing. In 2002, the wreck of Java along with several other ships was discovered in the Java Sea. In 2016, it was reported that it and several of the other wrecks from all sides were gone, just gone, taken away, absconded, not a bolt left. No doubt being made of pre-nuclear steel only added to their scrap value. Now, there are essentially two schools of thought here. One is that whoever did this is a piece of despicable gutter trash. They are grave robbers, after all. As such, the wrecks should be protected, by force if necessary. In fact, international law forbids violating the wrecks. The other unsaid argument is essentially finders keepers. These people would point out that these ships, and even the skeletons inside, are the detrius of colonial empires that fought over who got to enslave them. As such, their lack of reverence is understandable, even if you don't like it or agree with it. They would likely also point out it's easy to be outraged when you live on the other side of the planet in a first world nation as opposed to living hand to mouth with a family to feed. They would probably then go on to point out those laws were written by said first world former colonial powers and were forced upon them, if they agreed to them at all, and that an easy way to avoid this problem would be for said countries to see to it that they don't have to resort to grave robbing to feed their families. But that's a lie. There are other interests that don't care about the welfare of the indigenous people or the sanctity of the tomb. They just see the relatively easy, mostly free metal lying around. And make no mistake, 
stealing a 6,700 ton ship over 200 feet down in its entirety requires some major industrial backing. Again, it's a pretty messy topic, but I'm sure it will get discussed in a rational and respectful manner below. <sighs> Java was started May 31st, 1916 and was completed May 1st, 1925. Sumatra was started July 15, 1916, and was completed May 26, 1926. Celebes was canceled in 1919 before work even began. Main armament was 10 single 150mm 50 caliber guns. Two were at the bow super firing. Two were at the stern super firing. The other six were midship on the main deck with three on each side. Each mount weighed 20.35 metric tons. Maximum elevation was 29 degrees, giving them a range of 21,214 meters with a 900 meter per second muzzle velocity. Rate of fire was five hand worked rounds per minute. The projectiles themselves were either a 46.7 kilogram AP round or a 46 kilogram high explosive round. Secondary armament was four 75 millimeter, 55 caliber anti-aircraft guns. 12 depth charges could also be carried and 36 mines. Protection was okay for its time and size. Belt armor was 75 millimeters stretching from the forward most gun back to the rear most gun, then thinned to 50 millimeters aside the steering gear. 60 millimeter bulkheads closed off the arm box. The armored deck was 25 millimeters over the magazines and steering spaces, increasing to 50 millimeters as it sloped downward to meet the top of the belt armor. The funnel uptakes were 50 millimeters. The conning tower was 125 millimeters. The front of the gun shields were 100 millimeters. Propulsion was provided by eight oil-fired boilers, four venting to each funnel. These provided steam to the three turbines, each running a propeller for 73,000 horsepower in Java and 82,000 in Sumatra. Top speed was 31 knots and they had one rudder. Two float planes could be carried, but again, they had no catapult or hangar. In 1934 for Sumatra or 1937 for Java, they were modernized. The mine rails were removed and the four 75mm guns were replaced with four twin 40mm mounts. Also, the mast was replaced. Java was in the East Indies in May 1940. She spent most of the time after that escorting convoys and hunting German ships around the greater East Indies area until December 1941. When the Pacific War started, she was escorting a convoy to Singapore and mostly kept escorting convoys around the East Indies until February. On February 19, 1942, she took part in the Battle of Badung Strait, and while not damaged, couldn't stop the Japanese landing on Bali. Last, she took part in the overnight battle of the Java Sea, where she was sunk by at least one long lance torpedo. Sumatra was in home waters in May 1940, and quickly headed to England, where in June, she took the royal family to Canada. Afterward, she patrolled the Caribbean until late August when she headed for the East Indies via South Africa for a refit. Arriving in Surabaya in mid-October 1940, she was decommissioned awaiting a badly needed overhaul, one that they had no way of doing. In late January 1942, with the situation falling apart, she made 15 knots, her best speed, first to India, then to England, finally arriving at the end of October 1942. There, she was basically put in a corner and forgotten until D-Day, June 6, 1944, when she was scuttled as a breakwater to make an artificial harbor. Post-war, she was scrapped. <laughs>